yet reached our tipping point um, on, on racial issues, on colorism issues. I think we are still moving in that direction. The United States is at a different place in its history, um, both in terms of militarized, militarized response to blackness and to criminality. And so they've gotten their first. But I certainly think we are on that road. I want to jump in there. Um, that's interesting. That is an interesting take because, um, uh, you know, I actually see the uh, legislative dehumanizing of blacks in America and the systemic uh, and institutionalized racism that is being experienced in America. I do feel it's not as if we're on the same trajectory. I feel that we are on a different tra trajectory in terms of the experience of racism. And just bear with, bear with me on this point, because um, I, obviously we have a lot of racial prejudice. And, and obviously with what happened with George Floyd, we saw um, this uprising all over the world, but we also experienced, and I know this is, this is probably a, a lot of where you're coming from in Trinidad and Tobago, some of the most uh, vile uh, commentary coming out that was racist in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, but at what the point I'm trying to make is I really do, my perspective is I'm not seeing us on the same trajectory. I see us on a different trajectory in the context of race, but I also see us as adopting a very unique space where we have had beautiful black and brown leadership. And because we've had that kind of leadership at a political level, at a business level, at a professional level, um, I think that the way uh, racism is mediated through institutions and through you know, our society is a little different. And it may be that we have something that we can share in, in, in the global space about how we can live with this kind of violence and conflict and, and yet still emerge, I'm not saying we are utopia, but emerge in a way in which uh, George Floyd's are not common. That, that's all I'm saying. George Floyd uh, under the foot of a white person is not common. The police brutality issue. So yeah, yeah. So that's I'll what I wanted to throw to you. issues to unpack there. Um, when I say trajectory, we may not be traveling at the same speed, but I, I feel in terms of um, a disaffection among the Black community, we are in the same direction. Now, we, we are not traveling at the same speed because our history, although common, is, is very, very different. I mean, America had a legislative history of institutionalized racism up until the very recent past. I mean, there yeah. are people alive who were denied basic basic rights uh, yeah. up until you know the 50s and so on. Yeah. Coming post-slavery, mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of the Caribbean did not have that institutionalized, well, I shouldn't say institutionalized, but legislatively sanctioned mm -hmm. racism. And so the responses are different because the recency is, is different. However, uh, and yes, you are right. We, because we are predominantly black and brown society, our leadership, our political leadership, our, our legislative leadership, our judicial leadership has largely been pulled from the black and brown class. But there is a, a view um, that has taken hold in this, in this society that notwithstanding the numbers of black and brown, and notwithstanding the overt presentation of political power, legislative power, and so on, numerical power, that in fact, true power resides elsewhere. It does not reside in the black and brown community. Now, to what extent that is a myth, 
as opposed to reality. That's a different conversation, but it is certainly a view that is widely held. Oh, the other I that. thing in that, and, and this is in direct response to your comment about, um, you know, seeing all these, these racist comments, Trinidad and Tobago does not fully grasp the, the Ameri what, what is seen to be an American issue. Um, and, and you have large swathes of, of, of black and brown people who do not see this as their issue. Um, and, you know, to an extent, they can't be faulted because the recency of the American trauma um, as, it, as it related to black and brown people, we do not have. And so it is, it is perhaps easy to pretend that our trauma does not also exist and, and, and does not also manifest in its, in its own way. So perhaps we will not see a militarized black response, but we are seeing, we are seeing responses to, by a black and brown community who feels that its, its um, legitimacy is, is, is a lie perpetuated for the benefit of others. We, we are seeing that. And where that goes depends, um, depends a lot on how black and brown people intersect with not only the legislative arm and, 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 and the gov institutions of government, but in, particularly, in particular, how we intersect with the police who also, in, even in black and brown societies, tends to view black men as a threat. And I think that is a universal slavery legacy, that black men are a threat, even in black communities.